Get to the stupid Raw report. This is stupid. Wow, it wasn't that bad. I mean, there were some questionable things on it. It opened up with Miz TV and Cody Rhodes. It was the Cody Rhodes show here tonight. These fans absolutely loved this guy. That part wasn't stupid. For all it was worth, they just cheered him. They went crazy. They go nuts. They're just so happy to see him. He sits down, and Miz goes, are you done yet? And so he gets up, and he just does more. And the fans are like, yeah, they just love this guy. And then we had a uh, brief promo segment where uh, Miz constantly corrected him on his his inappropriate usage of of, uh, these incorrect terms here in WWE. And then uh, he tried to attack him, but, uh, you know, Rhodes sent him packing. So not only did uh, Cody beat Miz, he wasn't even humiliated in the angle leading up to it. So, you know, when you pay a guy a lot of money, that's kind of what happens. They're doing it Veer right Mahan, so What was that? They're doing it right so far. I mean, the match with Seth I was... I told you all that. Oh, well, <laughs> look. I did. No, look, I, no, what you said was, yeah, that's what they have to do. And we, I think everybody agrees that, yes, you better put your best foot forward with somebody. But the problem always is Vince's interest and all that sort of stuff. And we've always seen that slide. And in, in a case of Cody Rhodes, as you've mentioned, you can't let that slide. So there is going to be hyper-focus week after week. But this tie-in with Miz setting up to another match with Seth, which I know may be redundant for some people, but damn, the match was good. We got a great Miz and Cody sports entertainment thing, plus the bonus of a pretty damn good match. So two for two so far on Raw with Cody for me. We had uh, Veer versus Dominic. He just killed this guy. They sent him out on a stretcher. Poor Dominic just got uh, he got his uh, butt handed to him by by Veer. Who then? Hey, listen. I was a big fan of Veer. I was excited to see Veer debut. You guys, all of you worried about Cody, dude. Cody's gonna be fine. Veer is the one that you should be concerned about because man, total generic big mean guy. Total generic, nothing happened in promo. I strike fear into every man. It's like they gave him all of Strowman's lines, and that was that was the end of that. So that's that doing, formula. Ugh. Ain't doing nothing for me right now. No, and that more. sucks too. Because when you see this guy elsewhere, when you hear him talk, it's like I know they want him to have a distinct character, but man, I, I don't know if they set this guy off on the best foot. But we'll see. We had the damn dumbest thing with AJ Styles and Damian Priest. So they have a match, and the match is good because it's AJ and Damian Priest. And then all of a sudden, uh, Priest knocks AJ out of the ring. AJ's on the floor. Damian Priest stands in the middle of the ring. The lights go out. Then we see his face going, or something scary. They go to commercial. I thought, all right, well, you know, they do this sometimes. They want some stupid thing to lead you into commercial break because they don't want wrestling during the commercial. <laughs> but anyway, they come back, and we've just moved on. <laughs> I thought, what? And I rewound it. I miss, did I miss the count out? Did I miss, what did I miss here? I missed nothing. The lights went out, and then they went to commercial and came back, and they moved on. There was no finish. There was no bell. The match technically is still going on because they never rang a bell. And then they cut backstage and AJ's all angry. He goes, I don't know what the hell that was. I was like, we don't either. So it's anyway, he said he's even- not he's not done with Priest and Edge. Good for us, huh? If I were him, I'd just say I'm done with it and then just do something else. But the problem here is I don't mind letting the story play out. That's that's fine. Okay. But like, can somebody like when the when they come back from commercial, like everybody, even the Muppet show, even Kermit would be looking at Fozzie and Schroeder or whoever the hell they were going. Hey, why did the lights go out? Let's have something. Go- no, just the lights go out. They come back on. AJ's the only one upset. Nobody else is. Even he says it. Am I the only one upset here? It's like Kevin Owens later on asking if he's the only one who's crazy. Good question. Stupid. So then we had uh, Cody versus The Miz, which was a good match. And uh, you don't see a lot of really good Miz matches, but uh, Cody... You know, they had a very simple 12-minute basic match. They worked over the leg. They did the figure four spot. They did the whole nine yards. And uh, finally, Cody hits his springboard cutter. He hits the crossroads, pins him clean in the middle of the ring. Huge pop. Everybody goes crazy. And then uh, Seth Rollins. What is Seth Rollins' character? 
He dances out in his stupid suit. He's all wacky. I, it's like, I'm supposed to take this seriously when you're not taking anything seriously. You're dancing, you're posing, you do that stupid laugh that you stole from Sasha. And then uh, I guess we're going to do a match at uh, WrestleMania Backlash. I hate this character. It's better than the Messiah, but uh, that's about it. That's about it. You think he buys all of his clothes? I guess he gets to write all those off. Because the amount of money he must be spending on wardrobe right now is incredible. We had uh, Tommaso Ciampa debut. And then uh, Ezekiel shows up. And he says, hi, I'm Ezekiel. I'm Elias' younger brother. And Kevin Owens shows up and he goes, that ain't Ezekiel, it's Elias. It's obviously Elias. And uh, Ciampa goes, no, that's, that's Ezekiel. So I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, World Championship Wrestling, where they had a feud with Hulk Hogan and the Warrior, and the Warrior could appear and disappear in a cloud of smoke via magic. And one day, Hulk Hogan is in the locker room, and uh, he looks in the mirror, and he sees the Warrior, but the Warrior's not there. Only, in theory, only Hogan can see the Warrior. So like all of his friends in the locker room and everybody else, they can't see the warrior. So they all think that Hulk Hogan is crazy. However, we can also see the warrior. So we are also crazy. As they're calling the heel crazy, we're also crazy because we can see the warrior. So the story here is that Kevin Owens thinks that this guy is Elias. You and I know it's Elias, but everybody else in the promotion thinks it's another guy. Can I ask and it's you not a heels, by the way. It's baby faces. Can I ask you a question? Go for is it. Is there any possible possibility that Elias was gone for so long with no reasoning at all that they've done a bunch of stuff recorded with him so they can actually like play the two off of each other somehow? Well, I'm sure they should do some sort of backstage segment do, with CGI. Do you think they actually have, two, have done that? Two guys? <laughs> is there any chance? Because that's going to be the only thing that makes this thing redeeming is any comedy that can come from like Elias and Ezekiel in the same place at the same time together. Hey, uh, you know Natalie Portman? I've heard of her, yes. Okay. My mind was absolutely blown. My, my daughter still is into Star Wars, so we got a Star Wars magazine at the, uh, at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the, uh, I think it's the Phantom, no, I can't remember which, I think it's the Phantom Menace. So uh, uh, Natalie Portman plays the queen, okay? Padme, she's the queen. And so she's got this entourage. Spoilers, everybody. And uh, she has this entourage of these other handmaidens or whatever. And uh, it turns out at the end of the movie that uh, one of the handmaidens is actually the queen. And the real queen has been a decoy the entire time. Okay? So anyway, I've watched this movie, I don't even know how many times, much to my dismay, because this is the one with Jar Jar Binks. But anyway, I've watched this movie so many times and I was, I was absolutely, I mean, it wasn't even like a question in my mind. Natalie Portman played herself and the queen. I, it was just like, okay, well, you know, they use CGI or whatever. And so she's playing both roles, okay? So I'm reading this Star Wars magazine to, to uh, Paisley the other night. And uh, it explains to me that Kira Knightley was the one who played the queen. Huh. I was like, What? Ben and I like look Beckham. at the picture, huh. and I'm like, no, that's the same person. But in fact, it's not. It's two different people. Damn. Does that say now, more unless about you? Go, and... Unless Kira Knightley is playing Ezekiel, this thing just isn't going to work. Do all small white women look alike to you? No, Maybe but dude, I, even my wife, she was like, man, look at that. Huh? He looked I, online I, I, after I read it. Thought it was Natalie Portman, too. I didn't know that. I'm not the only one here, you idiots. Get out of here. So anyway, then we had uh, Naomi beating Liv Morgan because Rhea Ripley was in uh, protocol. So uh, they were going to do a tag team championship match, and they have to delay it because of uh, protocol. And so the challenger got pinned in two minutes by one of the champions. Because she probably would have lost Because of course match. she did. Because she probably would have lost in the tag match. So they it did doesn't that matter. Then beat her in the tag know. match then. I know. I know. I know. We had uh, the VIP lounge with Bobby Lashley. We've mentioned this before. Like they had a great, they had a great act with him and MVP. MVP talks for him. He's a scary looking guy. Now he's got to talk for himself. And there was a reason MVP talked for him. Crowds chanting, "What? They don't care." 
MVP comes out. And once MVP came out, MVP is such a great promo that, like, he lit a fire under Lashley, and they actually had a really good back and forth. Unfortunately, what it's leading to is another Omos versus Bobby Lashley match, which I do not need to see. Plus, Omos is going to get the win, I'm sure, this time, so that's not good. We had a segment with uh, Reggie Akir Tozawa. There was a bachelor party, bachelorette party. Bunch of bunch of hoo ha occurred, and uh, they're going to have a double wedding next week. And uh, our truth is going to be the officiant, as it is called. <laughs> Texas tornado rolls during that wedding, surely. Austin Theory is no longer Austin Theory. Literally in storyline, Vince decided Austin wasn't a very good name, so and now he's just Theory. That's literally what he said. So now he's just Theory. And uh, he left, and then Owens showed up, and he's really upset about this Ezekiel Elias thing. So next week, they're going to have a lie detector test, which uh, you know what I'm going to do next week, everybody? What's that? I am going to teach you how to beat a lie detector test here on the air. You think I'm joking? I'm going to tell you how to beat it. it. (laughs) And the answer is not by being a great liar. There is actually a trick. You know where I read it, by the way? Big right. Secrets. Remember we talked about that a while ago, uh-huh. the Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe? Are you doing yeah. the Wait, is, can I guess right now? Go You're for it. The, ta- the breathing and the tack in the hand bit? As uh, tack in the shoe. We'll talk about it next week. Okay. Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair beats Queen Zelina. Uh, that was quick. And then afterwards, they shot an angle where Sonya Deville attacked her, and Sonya Deville has signed herself to be the next challenger for... Uh, for Bianca Belair. Ice Cube's kid said it the best. O'Shea Jackson Jr. on Twitter last night. Sonya Deville has attacked more black people than high blood pressure. Doesn't even make any sense. Nobody can still explain why she hated Naomi so much. Then she shows up and chop blocks Bianca Belair. But in reality, I'm actually really happy to see her back in the ring because I would be just fine with Adam Pierce being the only uh, executive. That's just fine for me. Then we had uh, Chad Gable coming out. They had 45 minutes of TV time left, and so uh, Chad Gable came out, and he talked, 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 and he talked. Then they had Randy Orton and Riddle beating Alpha Academy, and we still had a half hour of television time left, and no matches. The show was just going to go off the air a half hour early. But thankfully, them, the Usos showed up, and they wanted a unification match with Randy Orton and Riddle. And uh, Randy talked him out of it. And so instead, we got uh, Usos versus the Street Profits. Usos beat them. And uh, we're heading towards a unification match. Raw and SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. I was reading this book about bats. The book explains that a bat cannot stand and then take off. Okay? A bat can only fla- fall from a great height and then fly. Gotcha. Sting is now a bat. He just goes up on something really high, and he falls. He he did not jump through these tables. (laughs) He he fell. He fell. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.